Hey everyone, it's Elo. I hope that you're doing well. Um, today's video, I decided I'm going to do something, again, different for me, um, but I felt like everyone kind of enjoyed the more casual style of my try on and haul video recently. So in that same spirit, I kind of just want to be myself today and not worry about what I should or shouldn't say. I'm just going to have fun and provide my own thoughts and feelings and opinions um, on food prep, I guess, uh, meal planning, buying food, um, everything that has to do with shopping in the grocery store. I don't know about you, but for me, this was a really daunting task at first. Um, I did have the benefit, I guess, of being somewhat exposed to these things growing up. I often went with my mother to the grocery store, so I knew the general layout of a supermarket, which most of them are pretty much laid out the same, even if the um, produce and frozen are kind of swapped or mirrored in certain stores. Generally speaking, you have similar items in similar areas of the grocery store. And I had the advantage of knowing that um, from a young age, but I know that not everyone has that experience. Um, everyone comes from different walks of life and whether you're incredibly wealthy or in a low income situation, sometimes children just don't learn anything about diet, about nutrition, about shopping in the store and about cooking. Um, so I thought I would sort of have kind of like a basics lesson, um, not so much in the cooking, although I will be giving out ideas and um, discussing common pitfalls when cooking. But today I'm mainly going to focus on easy, quick meals that you can make. Um, most of these are geared towards small groups of people. So cooking for one or two or three people, although these can all be expanded and made into much larger um, dishes for a larger group if you wanted to. I just know that when you're on a budget and you might not be the most cooking savvy person in the world, it can get really boring and repetitive and unhealthy eating out all the time. Um, so yeah, I figured I would just try to share some wisdom that I have or some knowledge rather about this situation, about what to do, about how not to waste money or um, groceries, <laughs> let them go bad because I know a lot of people do that as well. They might make the effort to go to the store and then end up throwing away half of what they purchased, which truly defeats the purpose um, in the first place. So I'm hoping that this will be an approachable, um, easy help kind of tutorial almost. And I have some products that I pulled here. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't, due to the length of my videos, pull anything that's refrigerated or frozen, but I will discuss those things as well, as I think that they're really important staples to have in your pantry. Um, I'm focusing on meals that are minimal when it comes to extra expenses. So a lot of the times if you decide that you want to cook a nice meal and you try to find a recipe online, you're going to be asked to have a teeny tiny amount of something that you can only buy in a jar that costs anywhere from four to sometimes ten or twelve dollars and that can be really frustrating when you're working on a budget so I'm taking that into account as well um, and I hope that you all glean something from this whether you're a novice um, cook or if you're an expert I think that it's still fun to hear other people's opinion and get some meal ideas because eating the same thing over and over really does get <laughs> boring. Okay, so um, just a little bit of background. I am not 
a professional chef by any means. I've never been, I'm self-taught, I should say. Um, I've occasionally used YouTube to help learn how to cut a certain fruit or um, I constantly Google to make sure things are still fresh and safe to eat. And that's normal, so don't worry if you have those fears and panics. I think most people, unless they have a culinary background, worry about, you know, poisoning their family and cooking inedible food, but it's really not as intimidating as it seems. Um, cooking should be accessible for everyone, no matter who you are, and um, I think that that's an important point to register from the get-go. Um, I moved away from home when I was fairly young, so for a few years I ate terribly when I left home. There were no home-cooked meals, everything was um, bought at a fast food restaurant mainly. I didn't grocery shop, I, didn't, I still don't like the grocery store, um, but I really had no intention of buying anything for myself. And I didn't realize how costly that was to live that way. Um, not saying that it's not true that fruits and vegetables can be expensive, they really can. But there are ways around that, which I'm going to somewhat discuss uh, here in this video. So I ate terribly for a while, and then I finally just sort of snapped. Um, I was overweight frequently depressed, um, running low on money, and honestly I was tired of having to choose every night where am I going to go eat? Like, is it going to be McDonald's, A&W, uh, Panda Express? Like, what garbage am I going to shovel into my mouth tonight? <laughs> um, and so I decided right then and there that I was going to learn to cook. and. I think I started by using an online website called allrecipes.com and just sort of sifting through. And at first I looked for things that were easy and things that sounded delicious. So the things that I'm going to present to you today are kind of, I would say they're generally healthier than what I started off cooking. So just keep in mind that if you are trying to cook like a nice feast and have something that you think is really, really yummy, um, I think all of these things are really yummy, but it's clear once you start cooking that the things that make food really savory, um, like your cheeses and your butters and um, oils and things that really make something taste hearty or savory uh, like a lot of people enjoy and it might be easier if you're weaning off fast food especially um, to have some of those kinds of meals in your repertoire so there are meals out there that are not as healthy as what I'm going to show you but still delicious, still good, still easy to make um, so if you're just starting you may want to do what I did and just go to a website like All Recipes I'm pretty sure you can even filter by how difficult it is or how much time it takes to cook a certain thing. Um, but this is me after, let's see, that was in like 2012 or 2013 that I hit that wall and said, I'm going to learn how to cook. Um, so it's been six, five, six years now that I've been cooking and I've cooked for one, I've cooked for two, and I have cooked for six or seven sometimes if I was having my family over for dinner in the past. So I have experience I think throughout, but don't worry if you're just getting started and you have no idea what you're doing. That's completely all right, and I promise you can't go that far off base. Um, you might make some mistakes, but that's okay, you learn really quickly and you move on and you try again and there's really a nice sense of accomplishment too when you cook a good meal. So I figure what we'll do is start with some breakfast options um, and I'm just going to make a little list here 
as we go along to try and help categorize some options. So for breakfast, they say it's the most important meal of the day. <laughs> for the longest time, I didn't eat breakfast. Mainly because I wasn't waking up early enough too. But I really do love breakfast foods a lot. Um, I think it's one of the best meals of the day in terms of what it has to offer. It's always really delicious. However, not every day does everyone have the time to go out and eat a nice big breakfast and if you did do that every day it really wouldn't be that good for your health because um, breakfast tends to be greasy tends to have high saturated fat meats um, oils and carbs which again are all delicious but not necessarily that good for you so I've sort of narrowed down to a few things that I think are yummy, um, not terrible for you, and easy to make. The first breakfast option is good because although there's a heavy initial investment, the payoff is really good and it's something that you can take on the go with you. So if you're someone who's frequently running behind or maybe doesn't even have that big of an appetite in the morning, this might be the right choice for you, which is a smoothie. Okay, so the problem with wanting to make a smoothie is that you need a blender. There are a lot of options out there for blenders. If you don't want this option, you know you can't afford a blender right now, you can either continue to listen for when you do have that opportunity or you can use timestamps below to skip. So a smoothie is great because you can get a lot of flavor and a lot of nutritional value packed into one drink that you can take with you as you're rushing off to a meeting or to your job or wherever you're headed in the morning. When I make smoothies, um, I tend to add some fruits sometimes some vegetables, sometimes some nuts. It just depends on what kind of flavors you like. So there are a lot of options out there. Um, going back to the issue of blenders, there are ones at Walmart um, that you can buy or any other sort of discount type store um, that really won't run you more than $20. Um, and these are good because you can fit a lot in there, but you also might have a harder time eyeballing how much is enough, which might need you to um, also have some sort of measuring utensils if the blender itself is not lineated with um, volume. So if it doesn't say on the side, like, this is a cup, this is two cups, if you reach this point, it might get a little difficult without some measuring tools if you're not used to measuring it. Eventually you really get used to it and you can kind of almost eyeball anything and not mess it up. Um, they also make like Ninja brand which is sold I think at Target and probably also at Walmart makes single portion. It's a blender that the blending device fits into the actual cup that you'll then use to drink your smoothie. Um, and then Ninja also makes a larger blender, um, like similar to the ones that you could get at Walmart, like Hamilton Beach or something like that. For me, for a smoothie, what I'll do is buy fresh bananas, a big bushel of bananas. Sometimes I'll even buy two things of bananas and then the good part about this is that everyone knows how difficult it is to eat bananas on time because they tend to ripen really quickly in especially in warmer climates once they're in your home 
So you can buy a boatload of bananas and then if you realize later down the week that, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna finish those three bananas in the next day and they're starting to kind of brown, you can take them and stick them in with all the other ones you bought for your smoothies, which will be frozen. So grab any kind of Tupperware, plastic bag, saran wrap even if you don't have anything else to work with at the time. It doesn't have to be fancy. You can take your bananas, peel them when you get them, when they're ripe, uh, peel them. You can break them either into thirds or in half. If you don't need a knife, you can just use your hands and plop them into your Tupperware or your Ziploc bag or your saran wrap. If you wanted to, you could be really OCD about it and wrap each individual broken banana so that you have them in perfect portions for when you're making your smoothie. I tend to put one banana per smoothie. And that is a frozen banana. And the reason why you break it in half or into thirds um, is because it makes it easier for the blending mechanism to whip it up and get that really nice creamy texture that you're going for. So if you buy a less powerful blender, I would recommend breaking the banana more times. It is gonna be frozen and hard and kind of providing your ice-like base. So I do one frozen banana. And I'll also choose um, a type of berry to put in with it. So this depends on your budget, what kind of berries you might want to put into your smoothie. But I always go for the frozen section and my favorite is to do about a cup of blueberries as the base. But if you're allergic to blueberries or you don't like them, they have all kinds of different um, options. And again, do it in the frozen food section, not fresh, because number one, the nutritional value is just as good, sometimes better in the frozen, and that's with vegetables and fruits. And number two, it's not gonna go bad. <laughs> So I'll do organic blueberries. And I do about a cup. I'll put the banana on top of the blueberries. Usually I'll do the blueberries on the bottom and then put on the banana. And then um, some people like to get their grains in this way too. I'm one of those people certainly. Uh, I don't really love spinach. I love iceberg like romaine lettuce when I'm eating a salad so kale or spinach which I'm less fond of on their own are excellent options to go in your smoothie you don't see them you don't taste them you don't notice them so what I'll do is buy pre-washed baby spinach in whatever kind of plastic tub it comes in and I get this in the fresh section and the produce section. And then I stick it in my freezer. Um, you can do this right away, or you can wait until it starts to wilt in your refrigerator. It doesn't really make a difference whatsoever. Um, I usually put it in the freezer right away because I don't want to risk wasting. So as you can see, your freezer is your best friend when it comes to dealing with food. Almost everything can be frozen and saved for an extended period of time, from bread to soup, muffins, everything, fruits, vegetables, um, and they're just as good. So I get baby spinach and I eyeball, I really don't, I just put in however much I want and I usually break the stems off um, just because my blender isn't excellent and it might not cut them up all the way and I don't want to have to be chewing something like that in the middle of my smoothie that bothers me on a, like a texture level so if you're a boss you can leave the stems on and just pop a handful in there if you want to not worry about the texture issue or you have a crummier blender just snap the stems off and stick the leaves into your smoothie cup so you've got your berry base, you've got your banana, you've got your spinach. Then I personally add 
maybe a quarter cup of yogurt. Fun fact though, I'm lactose intolerant. So I recently have come across this awesome product that is um, made by Silk, the people who make the almond milk and soy milk. And it is dairy-free yogurt. And this is really good for you because it still has um, live and active cultures in it, which are great for your stomach um, and your digestion, but there's no dairy. Um, I love their vanilla flavor. It's so good, tastes amazing, um, and I don't even really like yogurt. <laughs> so if you want to, you could just use a plain vanilla yogurt like Danon or whatever. If you're a fan of the Greek yogurt, you can use Greek yogurt. Um, or if you're lactose intolerant, grab a dairy-free yogurt. If I am using the dairy-free yogurt, which I always do for myself, um, I'll just use the whole what comes in one serving for it. And they're usually on sale at my local grocery store at least. Um, you can get four of them for five dollars, I think, which is really not that bad. So berries, banana, spinach, yogurt. Some people might uh, want to put in some protein powder. If you exercise, you can add protein powder to it. Um, if not, the only thing left that I do is some almond milk. I get the sort of unflavored, um, I think it's vanilla, but it's not extra anything. It's a plain vanilla almond milk. I think it's also made by Silk, but there's another company called Almond Breeze. The good part about buying something like almond milk, while I don't like it in my cereal, I would much prefer soy milk. Um, it's great for smoothies and almond milk and soy milk, whichever one you prefer, they last way longer than regular milk in the refrigerator. So even though you're only using like a splash of this a day, and I would say it's about a quarter cup or so, I usually fill up almost to the top of my berry base, whatever that is. Um, so it might be more like a half of cup. And yeah, I only use a little bit every day when I make a smoothie and I can keep that carton of almond milk in my refrigerator for weeks and it stays good. So you really, even though it might be like a three, three dollar and some change investment to get the milk the first time, that's really only costing you a dollar a week or whatever because um, you can hold on to it for so long. So that's option number one is to make a smoothie. They're very customizable. I don't put ice in my smoothies because all of my things are frozen already. Um, and if your smoothie is too thick, just add a little bit more almond milk in there um, and that will thin it out. Uh, you can use a spoon or a metal straw or whatever works for you to eat it on the go. So our second option is less involved and this is to have a parfait or just yogurt and granola. So again, I use the dairy-free silk vanilla yogurt. It comes with a blue lid, white base. It's really delicious. I love that kind of vanilla bean type flavor. Um, this is like a pretty darn healthy option too because you're not using any dairy it's vegan at that if you want it to be um, and what I usually do is I'll buy some organic blueberries some blackberries you could also do strawberries or really any other berry that you prefer bananas if you want since you'll already have them if you're making smoothies too um, I rinse my fruits off pour my yogurt into a bowl um, and then I combine the fruit into the yogurt and I add 
this granola. So this is a vanilla and chia um, seed granola, which is really yummy and it's completely organic, which this is a good time to tell you that if you don't know this, um, for food to be truly organic, which means that it hasn't been sprayed with pesticides this seal, the USDA organic seal, in America at least, has to be on there. Even if the packaging says natural or healthy or whatever it might say, that doesn't mean anything unless it has the actual USDA organic seal on there. So a lot of times when companies are trying to trick you into thinking something's healthy, healthier option, they'll use words that make things sound healthy um, but there's always a true marker of whether or not that food actually fits that category um, so this is also something that i occasionally throw into my smoothies um, it blends up pretty nicely and you don't really even notice it's there and honestly if you do i kind of like the added texture to it um, this one's gluten-free as well, and it lasts a long time. It's, um, I guess the brand is One Degree, maybe? It's kind of hard to tell by their packaging, but it might be called Farmers We Know. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it's just sprouted vanilla chia granola lightly sweetened organic oat and chia clusters with vanilla. And I don't mean to sound like a total crazy person about my food, but um, fun fact, people who are autistic are much more susceptible to the pesticides and chemicals that are used in uh, growing food. And if you did not know, um, a lot of those, any crop that's not marked as organic is going to be sprayed with, um, I think it's called glyphosate. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, not to sound grim, but these are the same pesticides that are being sprayed on all of our crops, which if you don't know, the reason why they do that is to keep away bugs and other potentially harmful um, plant diseases, animals, anything that could ruin the crops. So it's good in that sense because it protects the food from certain things, but there are consequences which involve the fact that now these foods are all tainted with the very chemical that they use to try to protect them. Um, and it just so happens that people like me, people with sensitivities, um, are more sensitive to these toxins and these same crops can be fed then to animals and if you consume products from animals, um, unfortunately there is research that shows that those pesticides then get transferred into the animal, into their bloodstream and then you consume them through the meat as well. So I believe in the circle of life. I don't hate on anyone who does or doesn't eat meat or dairy eggs, whatever, to each their own, I think. But I personally try to stray towards organic and I know that it has kind of a connotation of sounding hoity-toity and like, you know, you have to be like a yoga doing soccer mom to care, um, but it is really better for your health. And I think that um, our what we consume impacts our physical and mental health a lot. So I'm certainly a champion of organic um, foods and of meats that are um, from animals that did not consume those pesticides and whatnot. So just a short little 
lesson on that in case you're interested or, or wondering why a lot of my food is organic. Um, it's just health reasons, really. And I don't care whether or not you want to go with that. That's completely up to you. Um, so less heavy. Moving on to our third breakfast item, which would be good old fashioned muffins. The reason why muffins made it to the list is because number one, you don't have to make them yourself if you don't want to. A lot of local grocery stores, Walmart included, have delicious bakery items. And if you're just not there yet, you can buy muffins and again, you can freeze them. So if you want a muffin the next day, you can pop it out of the um, freezer the night before and sit it on your counter or in the um, refrigerator. Or that morning, you can thaw your muffin in your microwave um, or in your oven even if you want to. Make the house smell nice. Um, completely up to you, but they're very versatile. You can also make your own muffins and control what ingredients and how much of what is going into them. So there are skinny muffins, which um, are often made without dairy. They're often vegan and they're often delicious. One of my favorites is a skinny chocolate chip strawberry muffin, which is made actually with applesauce um, instead of using like eggs and they're really good. I make them in bulk sometimes and then freeze the leftovers and I'll just pull one out even for a snack maybe if I wanted to. Um, so don't underestimate muffins. Of course I already assume that people know about things like cereal but I'm trying to branch away from that number one because it's usually not healthy and number two uh, you can't take it on the go either. So these are kind of mixed options, I guess. You could also do something like a Pop-Tart, but again, that's high in sugar and probably not gonna hold you over for the majority of the day. The fourth option and final option that I'm gonna provide for an easy breakfast would be eggs, bacon, and toast. This is your most traditional breakfast, but I have a couple modifications that uh, you might be interested in that help. Um, I'm not a huge fan of eating eggs by themselves. However, I can get down with some egg whites most of the time, scrambled, and they make for cheap, like a couple dollars at the most, separators. So you buy your eggs, which are one of the least expensive things I think to buy because you can get so many for like two or three dollars. You get your eggs, um, you can use a separator to take the yolk out of the egg and you're left with the egg white which you can then just scramble. Um, I usually do just a tiny little bit of grapeseed oil in the pan and um, separate the egg, scramble up some egg whites put some salt and pepper on there, really good. Um, you can also choose whatever breakfast meat you want. I like bacon the most, but there's also um, sausage patties and chicken and other options uh, that you can go for. Again, if you wanna stray kind of towards the healthier side, try to get something that's um, without antibiotics or you know something that's free range, whatever. And then in terms of toast, um, I think the best options calorically, if you really want to do like a true bread, try something like an English muffin. Um, and you can even assemble these all together and make a sandwich to take with you. You can toast your English muffin, put your eggs and bacon on there. Um, that's a great option to go with as well. Um, or you can buy what's called Ezekiel bread, which is found in the frozen food section. So again, frozen bread, is it as fluffy and light as normal bread? No, but it's 
10 times healthier and you're still getting your like feeling of having a carb um which is nice so Uh, you keep Ezekiel bread either in the freezer or in the refrigerator. So you can take, if it's just you by yourself, you can take out like half the loaf and put it in the refrigerator to make for your next couple of weeks. It does take like two or three weeks for this bread to start, um, maybe even longer really, for this bread to start molding. So it has a long shelf life. Um, and again, you can portion how much you want to take out since it starts in the frozen foods anyway. Um, and Ezekiel bread tastes really good too with like a swipe of peanut butter or if you want to be really healthy and you have the money, you can do almond butter or avocado. Um, you can buy a fresh avocado, pop it open and spread the avocado onto the toast with some salt and pepper and that is really good too so all of these would be your more traditional um and i said this was going to be the last option but i lied i have one more thing which is my good friend instant oatmeal this is the quaker oats cinnamon and spice instant oatmeal. It has a nice little flap so that you can take out your individual package and if you don't have time to boil water on the stove and whatnot you can just stick a bowl of water into the microwave for about a minute um, and then just pour that in to your bowl with your oatmeal in it. Um, doesn't take long at all. This is one of the quickest breakfasts you can have and it's 160 calories, this flavor, for one packet. Um, the sodium is a little high. The carbs are high because it's an oat. Um, but it does have some protein. They make ones that are protein heavy um, specifically. so. If you're looking to power up that way, you can get the protein ones. And again, the sugars aren't great. Um, it's 10 grams of sugars, which isn't amazing, but isn't terrible either. So, and as you see in the picture, you can add um, some fruit to that if you want to. I like to do blueberry and banana if I'm adding any kind of uh, fruit to mine. but. It's, they're whole grain oats at least. Um, they're not terrible for you and they're a quick option. So again, I'm not saying this is like the most healthy food in the world, but it's certainly not the most unhealthy. Um, the things that I'm recommending are always better than doing a prepackaged um, like bar or Pop-Tart or bowl cereal. And these things are gonna make you stay full longer, certainly. Um, there are a lot of renditions of these things that I've just talked to you about for the breakfast options. Um, online you can look up different recipes, different flavor combinations, and then if you want to you can kind of create your own and see what you like and that's kind of part of the fun of cooking. Um, but all of these ingredients, like I said, they last super long because they're almost all frozen. Um, the dairy-free yogurt has a really long shelf life as well. Yogurt in general kind of does. Um, so you're not going to waste anything. If you wake up one day and you're not feeling that great and you decide that you just don't want to cook, you are craving something bad, um, you can go to the drive through and not at least feel guilty that you're wasting money on the things that you already purchased, if that makes sense. Because we're all human and we all have those days where we would much rather have a biscuit from Burger King or something than have something that feels um, healthier. So those are your five. Uh, 
breakfast options that I would recommend if you're trying to be conscious, a little bit health conscious, and a lot of bit budget conscious. Um, and again, the only additions to this were salt and pepper, which are super cheap. So, um, hopefully I'm not going too fast. I'm trying to include as much useful information as possible. But let's move on to lunch. I'm going to start with one of the easiest, but one of the least healthy lunch options that I'm going to talk about. Which is soup and grilled cheese. This is a classic and a favorite, whether it's cold or not out. Um, it's a really hearty lunch that just is nice to eat. Um, if you're looking for something that's a little more savory and hearty. So one of my favorite types of soups is this right here, which is the um, Campbell's slow kettle style soups. I tend to only buy these when they go on sale because they are a little pricier. Really, I buy whichever soup is on sale for the most part. Um, but this one, these soups tend to be thicker and make you feel more full, in my opinion. Um, and this whole container is only 340 calories, uh, which is really good for a broccoli and cheddar soup. Um, I also can get down with Progresso soups. They have a line that are light, um, which let's see, this whole container of soup, which is a potato with cheese, is only 200 calories. So you can see, I mean, this one's clearly stouter than this one, so um, it might be, there might be a little more in here than in here, um, but they're both really good and I think tomato is my other soup flavor that I really like to pair with grilled cheese, but these are both, I mean you're going to be pretty much full um, after eating something like this for your lunch, so broccoli and cheddar, potato, tomato, or really whatever you prefer if you're ill. Uh, nothing beats chicken noodle, of course. <laughs> I will say, like I said, this is not the healthiest option. These soups are canned. They have um, a lot of preservatives and things in them that are not necessarily great for you, but we all have to eat. We all eat stuff that's allegedly killing us, so whatever. Um, grilled cheese. Do you know how to make one? <laughs> if not, I'll tell you real quick. It's really not that hard. All you need is bread, cheese, and butter. That's it. Um, you will need a pan and a stove top. You can probably do this on a hot dish even if you have a small enough pan. But it's easy. Turn your heat up to medium. Um, you can find these directions online too. Uh, turn your heat up to medium under your pan. Throw a hunk of butter in there. You can use vegan butter. You can use... Um, regular butter, you can use margarine, whatever you prefer. Put that in there and wait for it to cook down, which will let you know that your heat is at a good temperature. And when it's a liquid in there, all I do is take my piece of bread. I prefer Wonder Bread because if you're going for a grilled cheese anyway, what's better than a soft piece of Wonder Bread? Um, and I tap the bread into the essentially pool of butter to get it nicely evenly coated on each side. Um, sometimes you have to add more butter if you didn't do enough and then you just flip it um, to make sure that both sides are pretty, excuse me, evenly covered. So don't try to like spread 
the butter on the bread with a knife beforehand. You're just gonna rip a hole in the bread. Just melt it down and then pat each side in and you'll get a nice, easy covering. Um, while you have your pieces of bread both down on one side, you can peek and check um, if they're ready to be flipped, which will just depend on how well you, liked it co you like it cooked. I like mine a little bit more well done, so I'll wait until it's kind of turning like a crispy-ish brown color in the center. And then you flip your top piece, and so now the, the charred part or the cooked part is up. You put one or two pieces of cheese on there. Again, you can use dairy-free, you can use Kraft, whatever you like, onto the cooked part. And then the other piece of bread, which still has the cooked side down and the um, untouched side facing up, just lift it and stick it right on top of the cheese. So both of your cooked sides are facing the cheese now. And then you have your bottom part has been cooking, so you might be ready to flip. And this is your brand new side as well. So now you just cook the two outside pieces to your liking. Boom, you've got a grilled cheese doesn't take long at all. Um, delicious. I cut mine on the diagonal and dip it in my soup. So that is optional one. Now we'll move into some healthier options. Um, some of these, two of these can be also dinners if you wanted them to be. Um, I often make these interchangeably for lunch or dinner. The first one is actually what I had today for lunch. Which is a salad with chicken. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, this one's kind of a pain in the butt to make. It does, it's very time consuming to make a salad if you're doing it the way I'm doing it, which is, buying full stalks of romaine lettuce that I then cut, wash, spin in a salad spinner to make them dry, put in the bowl, then I have my chicken that I have to cut, cook, put on top with everything else. So you could buy pre-packed lettuce to start if you're not very comfortable um, with this whole process. Uh, I would make sure that your whatever kind of lettuce you're buying the bag is not super inflated um, because they pump them with air to make them look better on the shelves, but uh, that makes the lettuce wilt faster. So just take a good peek at your lettuce ahead of time. Um, try to make sure that it's not gonna go bad right away. I do think that the advantage of buying the romaine stalks is that they last longer, in my opinion, than a pre-bagged salad. But maybe you just start off with one salad bag. Um, if it's just you or you and one other person, get enough just for one meal to see if you're actually gonna go through with it. Um, and then you can always buy more if and when you need more. I don't recommend freezing lettuce and then trying to unfreeze it for a salad. Um, I feel like it would get really watery and wouldn't taste good. So yeah, in my salad I put um, fresh chopped tomato, cucumber, and carrots. I try to buy all those organic. Um, I really like the Campari tomatoes. They're like a small sweet tomato, but you can get whatever you like. So that's tomato, cucumber, carrots which I do shredded, pre-shredded carrots. I just buy a bag of those. I put lots of salt and pepper on my salad. Um, and then I cook my chicken breast and I just saute it in a pan, which I don't know if saute really means anything other than cook. That's how I take it, <laughs> um, which I'll explain how to do in just a moment. Um, you could add other fixings if you wanted to. You can add, sometimes I add like red peppers. Um, 
if you don't care about your calories, you could add shredded cheese or nuts if you wanted, um, something like that. I like to keep my salads really light if I'm going to eat something like that. Um, and a point to note if you're not in the health game whatsoever. The majority of your calories from a salad come from your dressing, hands down. Unless you're putting gobs of cheese on your salad, um, it's going to come from your dressing. So try a balsamic dressing. Even if you're a huge ranch lover, which I am not a fan of ranch, I don't like the consistency whatsoever, um, try a balsamic dressing. I really like Wishbone makes a good balsamic, um, Newman's Own makes a good balsamic, Ken's makes a good balsamic. It's really good. I mean, it's very flavorful, it has a lot of like spices in it. Um, it's, it's really good. So I would recommend that. If you really can't get behind it, Wishbone also makes a light version of a honey Dijon that is, it's a creamier dressing akin to something like a ranch. If you really need that kind of, um, like, I don't know, texture in there to support you eating a salad, you can try that one. It's, it's really good. It used to be my go-to um, before I switched over to balsamic. So I would recommend that. Um, or, or just check out the light dressings that are similar to what you like with consistency and then just kind of work your way around. Um, I think the easiest ones to kind of palate are the balsamic, the honey, um, honey Dijon types. Um, And I guess ranch for a lot of people, but they can be mega calories if you're not watching how much dressing you're putting on there. Um, so just something to keep in mind. And whenever I do make salad, um, I like to eat a lot of things at once. <laughs> I really love food, if that wasn't apparent. So a lot of time on the side, I used to do like a hunk of really good bread because that's delicious and you can sop up your dressing afterward. It's a really good option. However, since I've tried to be a little more health conscious, a little less carb heavy, I've switched to doing, um, I don't really like nuts that much, but I really like the planters honey roasted peanuts or honey roasted nut mix. It's high in fat, nuts are, um, so it's not something that I recommend eating like a lot of, but having like a handful of those honey roasted nuts with your salad for lunch, there's nothing wrong with that. They're really good. Any kind of peanuts or whatever would be good with that. Um, as a side, another thing I do often is have a side of fruit with my salad. To pineapple, watermelon, cantaloupe. Um, I my, I don't digest apples very well, but apples or apples with peanut butter are a good option as well. Um, and pretzels are another option. Um, if you really want or you have the calorie option, you can do chips. Of some sort. Um, you can try for a baked chip. I know Ritz makes some baked chips now that are uh, pretty good and lower calorie. Again, anything that comes pre-packaged that isn't fresh um, is going to have chemicals and stuff in it that if you're trying to be like a super huge health buff, you're not going to want to eat those. But if you're an everyday person like me, uh, you have some of that stuff every once in a while, so just try to make like wise choices about like, okay, well if I'm having chips with my salad, I need to number one, make sure I don't eat the whole bag of chips, and number two, make sure that I skip on the chocolate that I was going to have um, afterwards. 
So just kind of feel that out for yourself. You know your body better than anyone else does um, and you know what you want. So you can make those decisions for yourself. But those are my usual sides to go with my salad with chicken. Now, when it comes to the chicken, since I'm aiming this towards people who um, are maybe cooking for a smaller crowd, one or two people, um, I think it's paramount that you buy individually wrapped chicken breasts. If you are vegan and you need to use some other sort of substitute, um, that's fine. You can do your tofu, your tempeh, whatever. But this is for people who don't have an aversion to chicken. Um, in the refrigerated section with meat, usually when you go in, there's your beef will be in one area. So that'll be ground beef, chunked stew beef. They'll have pre-made hamburger patties. They'll have... Um, all kinds of stuff like that and then they'll have your poultry section which will have ground chicken chicken breast chicken tenderloin all this kind of um, chicken meat and then they'll have pork which will have like pork loin and all kinds of stuff like that so it's usually sectioned by type of meat and in the poultry section they have different options for how they package it Usually, in a lot of these places, you can find a plastic pack, which inside of that has airtight, sealed, individual pieces of chicken breast. These are life-saving and budget-saving um, if you like chicken and you're cooking for a small crowd. You can, I always, buy the pack and stick it right in the freezer and then the night before I'm gonna cook, I take out my one piece of chicken. If you know you're gonna cook that day that you went grocery shopping, leave one piece out, throw the rest in the freezer. These things will last you forever and you can pull as many pieces as you need at a time. They are perfectly portioned so you don't have to worry about, oh, am I eating too much or too little or whatever. It's exactly the amount that you're supposed to have. I use these not just for salads but for my next lunch slash dinner option which is probably my favorite which is the chicken sammy um so i'll save the bigger looking pieces because they're not all perfectly uniform for my chicken sandwiches and i'll use the smaller ones for topping chicken for my salad um so if you're cooking chicken for your salad, I slice open the pack, I take out the piece of chicken and I rinse it with water just to get off any anything yuck that might be on there. Then I put it on a cutting board and chop it up into bite-sized pieces. Um, they can be, keep in mind that chicken shrinks when you cook it a little bit, so you know, you don't have to make them teeny tiny little pieces because then you're just going to have little nothings, but make them, you know, an inch by an inch if you want to or something. Um, I cut, cut those up, put them on a plate, then I go over and get my skillet ready. You can have a small skillet like this, and by skillet I just mean it's a pan, usually with some kind of a little lip and a handle. Um, it's not you can cook it in a tall like saucepan if you wanted to there's no reason you can't but probably for best results invest in some kind of a stovetop um, pan cooking pan um, which again you can buy those even just at walmart or whatever they're not they're not super expensive but i know that adding all of this together can get expensive but you'll use them for the grilled cheese you'll use them for chicken you can use um a pan, a, like a 10 inch pan, I would say would be your best bet. If you're just starting off, get one 10 inch pan. If you can get it with a lid, that's even better because sometimes you buy frozen steamable meals that require you to have a lid um, for them. So that's always the best option in my opinion. 
and I wouldn't buy anything that's covered in some kind of lacquer or paint finish because they generally tend to be peel and bubble off. So just get a nice regular um, pan. If it has a lid, that's great. 10 inches is usually 10 to 12 can be ideal um, when you're starting and you just have like one pan. So I use grapeseed oil when I cook. Um, in health discourse right now, the allegedly most um, healthy thing you can use is ghee, but I still don't really even know what that is. So I don't use butter anymore, except for when I'm making grilled cheese. I exclusively, and I don't use olive oil or extra virgin olive oil because apparently those chemicals in them change as they heat up and it becomes not good for you or something. I don't know, I can't keep up with all this crap. Um, but I use grapeseed oil, which is not expensive. You can buy it at any grocery store, Walmart, whatever, in the oil and condiment aisle. Um, you only need like a quarter size amount. Uh, you pop that in there and then you put your bite-sized pieces in there, set a five minute timer, that's all it takes. Flip it now and then crack some salt and pepper on there as it's cooking. Um, remember, you don't have to stir it all every second, but just like, you know, every minute or so, make sure that you're turning it so that all the sides are getting evenly heated through. When I make the chicken sandwich, I rub the oil on both sides of the chicken. I crack salt and pepper on both sides of the chicken. And then, I pop them onto this bad boy here, which is a George Foreman grill. If you don't have one of these, ask for one for Christmas, for your birthday, or go buy one. They're not expensive. You can use them in a college dorm. You can use them in an apartment. This replaces your need for a grill, and you can eat all of the fun things that you can cook on the grill from kebabs, steak, burgers, all of it. You can do right here on this baby, the George Foreman grill. It plugs into the wall. The light on the front will tell you when it's ready and heated and then you pop your food on. And it comes with a little um, sheet of paper that tells you how much time for different cooking temperatures. For two chicken breasts that I'll put on there at the same time, I just do five minutes. You don't have to flip them because it heats on both sides. Easy as that. Then you can make your sandwiches right from there. I like to use buns like these. You can get ones that are sesame seeds if you want or whatever, but I'll stick the George Foreman grilled chicken breast onto a soft bun, which I will put, um, or you can put whatever condiments you like, mayonnaise, sriracha, mustard, um, anything that you prefer. I like to do mine with a little bit of light mayonnaise and then a piece of romaine lettuce and a slice of tomato. Good thing about that is that you'll already have lettuce for making salads and you already have tomato for making salads. So you're sharing a lot of ingredients there, um, which is something that I really strive for when I'm shopping because it just saves, saves you money and um, time a lot of the times. So that's an easy one to do is the chicken sandwich. And you can serve that with similar or the same sides that you do for your salad, your nuts, your fruit, chips, um, or one of my other favorites which is couscous. This is super easy to make too. Um, the only thing that it requires is that you have oil or butter, which if you're doing grilled cheese, you'll already have butter. Um, if you, I mean, you'll need oil to cook some of these other things anyway, so that's easy enough. Um, this one requires a saucepan. So if you're just starting off, you might want to skip on this until you have money for both a um, cooking 
pan and a saucepan, which saucepan is just the taller one. Um, this is really easy to make though. You just, I mean, it has the directions here. You fill up with a little bit of water, the spices that are in here, and your butter or your oil. You let it come to a boil, pour in the couscous, and move it off the heat. It takes maybe 10 minutes total to make this. You can put this as a side with your sandwich. You can put it as a side with a burger. You can uh, put a couple um, spoonfuls of it into your salad, or you can do rice into your salad if you want. I just prefer the couscous at this point, and I think it's a little bit healthier. Definitely if you buy the whole wheat version, it's healthier. Um, this is an option. And if you want something even a little healthier than that, they also make quinoa, which similarly easy to cook, but this does take closer to a half an hour um, because you have to let it get hot first and then the cook time is like 20 minutes. Um, so this is something for if you have a little bit more time. Um, I usually do this more for dinner um, since I usually have more time to cook for dinner. So. There are other quinoas and couscous too, but these are just the brands and the flavors that I've found to be really, really good. Um, that was the toasted pine nut, and this is the um, roasted red pepper and basil, and these are from the brand Near East. But they do have ones that you can stick in the microwave, like Uncle Ben's and something like that, uh, for like 80 seconds. So if you're just getting started, go easy on yourself and feel free to use those. Um, couscous, rice, and quinoa. All good options for grain sides so that you're not just chomping on bread all the time. You can also make any of this healthier if you want to with different kinds of breads and whatnot. Um, Let's see. I think that was all I really wanted to talk about for lunch. You can also do like so much other stuff, but these are the ones that I've found to be the most cost effective and delicious and filling. Um, and again, I'm going to talk about some dinner options, which could also easily be substituted for lunch. There's no reason why you can't. I just think the other dinner options are a little heavier, so you might not want to eat something that heavy for lunch. Although some people suggest that you should eat your heaviest meal at lunch, so again, what do I know? I'm not totally sure <laughs> what's ever going on, but another category that I just wanted to pop in here um, would be snacks which we've already talked about pretzels fruit nuts I'm gonna add to that oh. popcorn chips we talked about, although those aren't super healthy. Another option would be uh, rice cakes, which yes, they initially kind of taste a little bit like a weird cardboard or something, but these ones are by um, Quaker and they are lightly salted and they're really not that bad. Um, they last a really long time. They're very surprisingly filling, and they're only like 30 to 40 calories a piece, which is nothing. You can swap them with peanut butter or almond butter if you want to, and it makes them um, really a good long-lasting kind of snack. So we'll do rice cakes. Speaking of all these different nut butters, there's also just having a spoonful of peanut butter. Um, you can do chunky, you can do smooth, whatever you feel like. 
peanut butter is a great staple to have in the house because it's um, it's caloric it's heavily caloric but it has good kinds of fats that keep you feeling more full um, so swabbing some peanut butter on a spoon and having like a little bit of soy milk or something like that is a good option and it also goes nicely on toast on with apples which is a good snack as well um, or on rice cakes and the only reason why I'm not saying to use almond butter is just because it's more expensive if you have the budget definitely do almond butter it's way better for you I think um, and from what I can tell anyway if you're allergic to all the nut butters try doing something like chickpeas which you can take these they're in like a little bit of a liquid like a water um, salted water I think and they're also known as garbanzo beans same thing chickpeas garbanzo beans this is like an 88 cent can of chickpeas you can dry them out and um, you can oven roast them with like salt and vinegar or different spices to uh, make different flavors they have a lot of options online just cook them in the oven and they become a really really good um, snack that is high in protein and holds you over um, to the next meal let's see this whole thing there's three servings in here so it's like like 300 calories for the whole tin of chickpeas um, so roasted chickpeas also an option fruit obviously is a great choice um, any kind of fruit really and I highly recommend buying the whole fruit and learning how to cut it on YouTube if you need to you may need a good knife set as well if I had to say like what your objectives are to buy number one would be your 10 to 12 inch skillet pan number two would be a great knife set like really invest in a solid knife set number three would be like assorted utensils like tongs um, spatulas and stirring spoons that have a nice um, basin to them not quite a ladle but a spoon that you could actually like scoop things out with is really really helpful um, also like a whisk those would be I think like your top options let's see can I even draw Oof, I'm trying, girl. <laughs> um, spatula and tongs. Yeah, so those would be your yeah, main utensils to get. Um, skillet, like that. and then eventually you could get like a saucepan. deep pot like one that you could cook like a pasta in or something like that pasta is another very affordable option but it's just not that good for you because you're just eating a carb with sauce on it <laughs> um let's see did i have any other snacks pretzels popcorn yeah all of this stuff is not terrible for you and usually uh pretty affordable as well okay so um and then i had two options for kind of desserts which i'll just pop in here as well under snacks one great dessert in my opinion is taking your fruit and adding cool whip to it especially if you do just like diced not diced sliced bananas 
and strawberry. Put those together in a bowl, add some Cool Whip. It tastes like you're having a really luxurious, delicious dessert, but it's very low on calories and good for you nutritionally. Um, and then the other thing would be like some dark chocolate squares. And again, the grocery store has a lot of options nowadays for healthier ice creams and, I mean, they have everything. They have dairy-free stuff, they have vegan stuff, they have so many options. I would say ice pops. And not just any ice pops, but like, there's a brand that's called Outshine, I think. They make like fruit ice pops. They don't have like pulp or anything in them, but they're not heavy in sugar. Um, those ones are also really good and worth trying. Um, so I think that would be another option for a dessert that wouldn't be terrible or you can have as a snack. Um, Finally, we will move on to dinner. So for your dinner options, like I said, some of the things that we've already talked about can certainly be dinner options, um, but, and my camera battery is dying here so I don't have a whole lot of time but um, I guess I just wanted to add that you can have burgers are an option especially if you have that form and grill or a grill outside that you can access you can make all different kinds of burgers um, you can use regular cheese pepper, pepper jack cheese you can add salsa verde to your burger um, and some avocado with like a spicier cheese you can do like a sriracha mayonnaise um, with my burgers i like to serve sweet potato fries which i make myself sweet potatoes are inexpensive and easy to prep and i also like to do steamed vegetables on the side which are sold in the grocery store in the frozen food area look for ones that are organic if you can get whichever blends you like you stick them in the microwave for five minutes which is usually how long it takes for your meat to cook anyway um, and they're really good just add some salt and pepper it's like an awesome way to get good nutrition without wasting uh, your money <laughs> um, you can also do something like Sloppy Joe's, homemade, not canned. My favorite recipe for this is from All Recipes, and they're called Ruby Drive Sloppy Joe's. And sometimes if I'm going to eat something like that anyway, I'll just buy a bag of frozen fries <laughs> and heat them up with that. But that's kind of like for a like, cheat type meal. Um, you can also buy a quesadilla press, which is similar to like the Foreman. And you can make all kinds of crazy different quesadilla options. Tortillas are not that expensive. Um, again, this isn't the healthiest option, but you can get canned refried beans, you can do chips and salsa on the side. Um, all of these things are pretty heavily interchangeable, which is always good. Try to buy things that you'll know you'll like use the extra with a different meal later on in the week or something like that. Um, let's see. I had a couple other ideas, um, but I think that they would take a little while to explain and they're maybe like a little more intense to make than these things. So let's just see how this goes over, I guess. Um, Y'all let me know what you thought 
and if you'd be interested in some more tips and cooking ideas and meal options I'd also love to like actually cook on camera sometime maybe um, I love cooking I've grown to really really love it and I hope that I can help you do the same so if you have any questions um, want links to stuff or whatever uh, just leave me a comment below and I'll do my best to help you out um, and try not to be intimidated because it's certainly not as hard as it seems. <laughs> okay, well, I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you for listening. I hope that you learned something and I will see you in my next video.